Hi everyone, in this video, I'm going to be showing you an email tool which helps me to memorize anything that I'm currently learning. Take for example, I have English vocabulary and their meaning sent to my inbox every hour starting from 7 a.m. each morning until 7 p.m. So whenever I get these emails, I will review the terms there and then to test my memory. This does not require Microsoft Outlook or Excel. You just simply need an auto hockey script that I'm going to be showing you in this video. So if you if you're interested in this tool, please continue watching. All right, welcome back. If you're a student or you're simply just trying to learn something new, repetition is probably key in making any new knowledge wholly yours. You may use an already existing free learning tool such as this one here. Anki. But the problem I realized when I was trying to use tools like this was that I had to make a conscious effort to open this app on my PC or on my mobile phone to actually start putting in the effort to learn. In today's world with million things happening in each day in everyone's life, I found remembering to take the time out to do so a challenge. So if you're like me, you can instead do what I began to do, which is that I just send emails to myself containing the terms and the meanings regularly, which allows me to revise the terms on the go. I'll be notified of the received emails on my mobile phone and I'll revise the terms there and then, or at least go through them whenever I have time to review my inbox at the end of my day. So here is a script and there are three parts to it. The first part is to create a task that will continuously run over the day and the second part is select card and then the third part is to send the email out. I have covered already most of these except for the eni file bit which I'm going to go through today with you. Now if you want to learn how this stuff works, I will provide the links to my previous videos in the description of this video. So if you haven't watched them and want to learn how it works, you can go and watch them. Before we go into the eni read of eni file, what I want to show you is my next script, which is a deck builder. And with this deck builder, what what's going to do is when I run this script, it's going to show up a little GUI where I'm allowed to type in uh, any new term that I want to add into my deck. Right now, there is nothing in my deck. The deck doesn't exist at all, actually. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new term and let's call it the meaning of my new term for the meaning and I'm going to add some line breaks as well here. This is a new line. This is important to learn. So please learn. If I go ahead and press the add button, I'm going to see the ini file being created right here. If I open it up, I'm going to be seeing the ini file with the values that I have entered in. So how any file structures work is that I have a sample here where you have a section in each any file followed by a key and a value and you can have multiple keys and values in any section within the any file and you can have multiple sections like that as well and so on and so forth. So in my deck, what I decided to do is to call my section my term and then key equals that's going to be static the meaning of the term that is displayed in the section and I'm going to use this as a structure for my deck in order to read from it to send the email out and so let me go ahead and run the script again for the deck builder and add a new term this is another term this is the meaning of the other term this is also very important to learn. Good luck, right? If I hit add, that's also going to be added to my deck file. And as you can see, it has been added in a manner that my email learning tool script will be able to read. Now, instead of using this, what I'm going to use is I have a backup deck. So let me just move this out to my folder where the script is saved. So if I open this up, there will be words wrapped in square brackets meaning the sections and then followed by the meaning of the word like that now notice how you have the pipes here 
and the pipes are intentionally there and that's required because Enifile does not allow you to put in line breaks when you define a value for a key. So here is the string or here is the line of code that converts all the new lines into pipes first. And then when we go back to the email learning tool, there's going to be a line here which converts the pipes back into line feeds. And this is a way around for adding lines into the values and any feed. So in my sample deck, I have nine words with their corresponding meanings. So, so what the script is going to do initially is it's going to create the task and this is the task scheduler on Windows. When you run this for the first time and there's no task in your task scheduler called My Daily Learning, then this is going to go ahead and create a task in your task scheduler. If you have the task already, then it's going to skip the entire section and then move on to selection of the card. Now, with the selection of the card, it's going to do an any read and it's going to read the deck file and then it's going to just look at the sections, i.e. the terms and put all the terms into a variable called deck. And then I'm doing here a count of the line breaks. So the deck is going to have all the sections or the terms separated by line breaks. So the number of line breaks plus one will represent the number of terms within the deck. And in this line, I'm doing a random selection of a number between one to the maximum number of terms within the deck. And I'm putting that output into a variable called rand. Now this is a simple random selection. It's obviously not as good as Anki, for example, which gives you an option to do space repetition, which is more effective in you doing the learning. If you want to upgrade the algorithm to make it better suited for yourself, you can try doing so. But to keep it simple for me, I just did a random selection of any term within the deck. So they will have an equal chance to be picked. And then we're going to go through a loop pass in order to find the term that matches the value that is stored in the random variable. And then we'll get the term assigned into the variable term. And then using that term, we'll read from the deck file the meaning of the term and assign that into the variable called meaning. And we'll replace the pipes into the line break so it comes out in a way that we expect it to. And then it's going to go ahead and send the email out. Now I have put in my password in here, but I'm going to change this after this video. So don't try to use this password to log into my email. Now, but when, like I said before, when I run this for the first time, it's going to create a task in my Windows task scheduler. So let me just go ahead and run it. And it's going to open up that command prompt, subsequent to which my task scheduler will be open. And as you can see here, my daily learning task has been created. So if I double click to open it up and go to triggers, and I'll see that it triggers every day at 7 a.m. So if I open this up, I will see today's date is 18th of July. So it's going to wait until the next day, 19th of July, 7 a.m. Because it's already past 7 a.m. today. It's going to wait until the next day. And then once it starts, it will repeat this task every hour for a duration of 12 hours. So through the course of 12 hours, starting from 7 a.m. So I'll be getting 12 emails. So I'll leave this on and come back tomorrow at 7 p.m. to see how it went. So I'll come back in a little bit. All right, so it's been over a day now. And as you can see in my inbox, I have got 12 emails containing the terms and the meanings starting from 7 a.m. and ending at 7 p.m. So as I go through my day in my main and actual email address, I'll get these emails sent to me and I'll be notified on my mobile phone and when I get notified on the mobile phone, I will go through these terms to test my knowledge to make sure I remember them. So this is how you can use the tool and hopefully you'll find it useful. If you have any questions about this tool, do let me know in the comment section below. And this is it for today's video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.